Okay, let's uh, unpack this. You've shared some really fascinating source material with us, an article, basically, that's digging into construction framing. Plays out a pretty interesting comparison. That's right. Yeah, this deep dive is really all about that source material. We're going to break down the key differences it talks about between, well, traditional wood framing and this other system called MHS aluminum framing. It's specifically within type V construction, right? Exactly. Specifically type V. We're looking at, you know, everything the article covers, costs, speed, performance, durability, uh, even the environmental side. So our mission here is to help you navigate the points the article raises make sense of the pros and cons it presents for each approach. Yeah, the goal is for you to walk away understanding the most important bits of this comparison and why it actually matters, especially if you're involved in or even just curious about building materials and how we build low-rise structures. Perfect. Let's dive into what the article reveals and see where this comparison gets, well, really interesting. So the source starts by setting the scene, grounding us in type V construction, defines it based on the International Building Code, the IBC calls it a uh, pretty flexible type of low-rise construction. Mm -hmm. And a key thing it points out is that Type V lets you use any code-approved materials, so that includes combustible stuff like wood, obviously, but also non-combustible options. You see it a lot in housing, right? Residential, light commercial buildings. That's the typical use case, yeah. The article mentions that with standard wood framing in Type V, you can often go up to about four stories, maybe over a concrete podium. Oh, no. Although, yeah, it's quick to point out that the exact height limits really depend on the building's specific use, the occupancy class, and, of course, what the local rules say. Always comes down to local jurisdiction. Right. And the source also notes that depending on that use, you often need other things, too, like fire-rated walls, floors, sprinklers. And seismic reinforcement, definitely, if you're in an area prone to earthquakes. That's a must. Okay. So that's the traditional context. Now, the source contrasts that with this MHS aluminum framing. Describes it as a patented post and beam system. Yeah. And the article jumps right into listing what it sees as major advantages for MHS, like uh, seismic resilience. It says it's tested and approved for all seismic categories A through F. A through F. So full range, that's, even the highest risk zones. That's what it states. Yeah. Yeah. Covers the most earthquake prone areas. And it makes a pretty bold claim about strength, too. Oh, yeah. It says the interlocking connectors are rated up to 20 times stronger than typical light steel or wood connectors. 20 times. Wow. OK. Another huge point it emphasizes is non-combustibility. Aluminum just doesn't burn. The article suggests this could mean lower insurance costs and obviously a lower fire risk compared to wood. Makes sense. And environmentally. Presented as 100% recyclable. So the idea is a lower long-term environmental footprint. Plus, it talks up prefabrication and modularity. Right. The idea being faster construction times, maybe more accuracy. Exactly. Less site work, more factory control. And one more spec they gave is wind resistance claims the system handles hurricane winds up to 170 miles per hour. Okay, so strong claims on performance. Now, the article mentioned specific regulatory stuff, too, which is important. Mm. An approval in L.A. Yes, that's a key detail. It notes MHS framing got approval from the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety, LADBS, gives the LARR number. 25703. And LA is known for tough codes, especially seismic. For sure. The approval mentioned in the source is specifically for use up to three stories, which is pretty relevant for a lot of Type B buildings, especially in those seismic zones. But there are caveats, right? It's not just the frame. Right, exactly. The article is clear that the exterior parts, you know, the walls and stuff, still have to meet all the local codes for weatherproofing and fire resistance, just like with any building method. And it adds that depending on what kind of panels you actually use for the walls or roof with the MHS frame, you might still need additional fireproofing to get the full fire-rated assembly the code demands. Yeah. So the frame itself is non-combustible, but the whole system, wall, floor, roof, has to meet the fire rating requirement. Got it. Okay. So with all that context, how does the article actually stack these two up head-to-head? -head? Let's start with the big one, cost. Yeah. The upfront numbers look quite different according to the source. It puts the material cost for MHS, including the accessories, somewhere between $55 and $95 per square foot. Okay. And wood? For traditional wood framing, using SPF lumber, that spruce pine fir, pretty standard stuff, it quotes $25 to $45 per square foot. So yeah, quite a bit more for the aluminum system initially, almost double. Potentially. Definitely a higher upfront ticket price. But the source immediately pivots to life cycle costs. Ah, the total cost of ownership idea. Exactly. This is where it builds the ROI argument. 
The article claims MHS has lower life cycle costs because, while well, aluminum doesn't rot, termites don't eat it, it doesn't support mold growth, supposedly very low maintenance. Versus wood, which can have issues with pests, decay, needs more upkeep over time. Right. Wood is vulnerable, needs treatment, potential repairs down the line. So the argument is MHS might cost more now, but it saves you money over the building's lifespan. Okay, that's the long-term view. What about the actual build? Installation, speed, labor. Now, this is another area where the source really leans towards MHS. It argues that because the system is modular, pre-engineered off-site, the actual labor needed on-site is much lower than for wood framing. Because wood involves all that field cutting, measuring, nailing, much more manual work. Precisely. And that translates to speed. The article gives a pretty specific number here. Yeah. What does it say? Claims MHS installation is 30% to 50% faster. 30 to 50. That's yeah. significant. It is. The example given is framing 1,000 square feet, two to three days with a trained MHS crew, versus four to six days for a typical wood framing crew. That kind of speed can really impact project schedules and costs. No kidding. Okay, beyond the build itself, what about how they perform long term? Durability, resilience? Well, fire resistance comes up again. The article stresses MHS is non-combustible, meets IBC type VB. Wood, being combustible, needs those extra fire-rated assemblies built around it to comply. On consistency. Is that a factor? The source makes a point of it. it. says MHS offers high precision because the aluminum parts are extruded in a factory, very controlled process. Where is wood? Wood is natural, right? It can warp, it can shrink, its strength can vary piece to piece. The article suggests this makes quality of control potentially trickier on site. And for those big risks, earthquakes, high winds. The comparison favors MHS there too, based on the approvals mentioned. Approved for all seismic zones, wind rated to 170 miles per hour. The implication is that wood framing in those same high-risk areas might need significant engineering upgrades to match that performance. And just general wear and tear. MHS is presented as resistant to corrosion, termites, mold. Wood, as we know, can be vulnerable to insects and moisture if not properly protected and maintained. The source brings up a few other comparison points too, like the environmental angle. Right. It frames MHS as fully recyclable with a lower carbon footprint. Contrast that with wood, mentioning potential deforestation impacts and uh, typically more job site waste from cutting and fitting wood studs. Hmm. What about design? Does one offer more flexibility? The article argues MHS does, mainly because of its modular grid system. It suggests it's easier to adapt to different wall types, like SIPs, structural insulated panels, or various claddings, and potentially better for achieving those modern open layouts compared to traditional stud walls, which have limitations on spans. Okay. And one last comparison point. Yeah. Inspections and quality control during the build. Source claims inspections are simpler for MHS. The argument is the factory precision, the modular grid, maybe labeled parts, make it easier to verify correct assembly. Versus wood framing, which is built stick by stick on site from a material that varies. Exactly. Described as needing potentially more frequent or complex inspections to catch issues and ensure everything's up to code. Yeah, and the article even quickly walks through the install steps to kind of hammer home that difference, like how it meets the foundation bolts for MHS, the sill plates for wood, the framing itself pre-made bolted grid versus nailed together on site, floors, roofs, often prefab panels for MHS versus joists and plywood for wood, wall connections, brackets and bolts versus nails and screws, really emphasizes the factory modular versus site built difference. Mm -hmm. So based on all that, the article pulls together some key takeaways, especially aimed at, you know, builders and developers weighing these options. And a big one seems to be that return on investment argument, despite costing more upfront. Right. The source really pushes the idea that MHS delivers greater value over time because of those assumed lower maintenance, repair, and potentially insurance costs. It connects back to that life cycle cost point. Makes sense. And the speed factor is another major takeaway. Definitely. Faster build cycles are highlighted. The modularity allows for really rapid assembly. The article specifically mentions things like modular ADU's accessory dwelling units and prefab housing as good examples where this speed is a big advantage. And safety from a code perspective. Positioned as a key benefit, MHS meets or exceeds the IBC type VB standards largely thanks to being non-combustible and having that documented earthquake resistance. Okay. And the last main takeaway seems to be sustainability. Yeah. The argument that MHS aligns better with environmental goals. Being fully recyclable is the main point there. The article even specifically calls out California's green building goals as context where this matters. So wrapping up our deep dive into this source material, the overall message it's sending seems pretty clear. It presents MHS aluminum framing as, well, 
a potentially transformative option compared to traditional wood for type V. It definitely makes a strong case. The argument boils down to MHS offers or claims to offer better performance, lower long-term costs, enhanced safety, and a lighter environmental footprint. The source goes so far as to suggest it's a smart, scalable, future-ready system for architects, builders, city officials, basically anyone involved in planning or executing low-rise construction. Yeah, it uses the phrase next step forward, calls it out specifically for planning departments, developers, prefab manufacturers looking for sustainable and resilient type V solutions. So here's something to think about based purely on what the source laid out. You've got this significant upfront cost difference, right? But then you weigh that against these potential long-term savings, the much faster build time, and those resilience benefits like fire and seismic resistance. How might balancing those factors start to reshape decisions about low-rise construction, especially in places really focused on sustainability or dealing with risks like earthquakes or hurricanes? It's an interesting question the source implicitly raises.